We're down here in Enosburg now today. A big change of view here. We're in the 8670. We got her figured out yesterday. It took a little bit of more work than we were hoping. We got little Henry here. Yes, you're both your uncles are over there. Uncle Ferdy and Uncle G. We got a lot going on. We got manure spreading solid and liquid. Henry loves riding shotgun in the big tank, right? He's got his You like riding with uncles? Yes. He's got his little tiger here. Or jaguar or leopard, whatever it is. It's his little stuffed animal. Does it have an owie? Yeah. It's got to get sewed back up. But we are spreading with this. So, we on my tractor have a 540 PTO, and then in the cab, I just run Thousander. Uh, that way, I don't have to switch to PTO on the tractor when I stick it on other stuff, because this is really the only implement that runs Thousander right now, except for the pick right does too now, but that has the big Thousander. So, we slowly have a couple stuff. Um, the crappy thing is, my tractor works perfectly fine. The strange thing is with this tractor is it knows it doesn't have the thousander shaft on the back. It must be the speed sensor picks it up with how the holes are cut out in the shaft. It must sense that it's the wrong PTO when it's spinning. So the only way I can get around it is I'm running on the 540E, which is the eco mode. And I can only spin it at 620 RPMs. If I go any faster, uh, it starts also saying it's over revving the PTO. So I'm spreading only at 620. Um, it's way slower than I would want, but it's not a big deal, at least I can spread. So maybe we'll figure something out. Maybe I can get a, uh, an adapter piece, like the, the little things like we use on our corn planter. Uh, I go to a 540 with a thousander, I could slap that on there, then I could slick the thousander back on this and it'd work fine. Because I don't think those pieces cost too much. But I could be wrong. Gerhard here, he's running the pick right. It's on the 7495. Now, I know when we got it, we were saying the 200 is going to pull it. And then we found out the PTO issue, and we don't have a large thousander for it. We could buy the adapter piece, but you know, we have the large thousander for these Massey's. It just bolts right on. The next plan was it was going to get pulled by this tractor, which wasn't going to be an issue until my tractor just went down yesterday because we found out there's antifreeze in the oil, uh, oil in the antifreeze so kind of put a damper on all the plans we had everything lined up perfectly just for one thing to ruin the plan so you make a plan the plan goes to shit you make a new plan so we figured it out now and we're gonna get through it because that's all we can do that thing right there was worth its weight in gold. That thing, he's only done this much so far, but he is just plowing through the pile all by himself, getting a lot done. One tractor spreading, one person driving. I mean, you still got the loading tractor, but it's just so efficient. We've already noticed so far that it's uncomparable to before, because before to get this much done in the same time period, you need at least two of the little box spreaders going. Three, honestly, because one normally breaks something. So, really like it so far. These two passes that I'm driving on, this is two passes, so it's around 60 feet. We, it took a handful of loads now to get everything adjusted correctly, the hydraulic set up right, and the timing stuff. That way it's all flowing good for him. Um, but now that I think it's pretty tuned in good now, uh, it looks really good. You can't compare the vertical beaters to horizontal with how nice of a job it does. But we're liking it. And Henry, what do you think? Uncle. Uncle. That's all he can think. <laughs> now that he's got it all figured out, we got it set in right with all the settings. He's going over a couple spots where he was messing up. It wasn't working right. He kept turning off the pusher because we didn't have the hydraulics right so he's also fixing those spots that way everywhere gets some and I'm about to run out here in a second how to go around that little wet hole but you can see right there to the right he's still going to spread all that
it is going down very evenly so we're liking it Hi. what do you think Henry what do you want to do Hi. you want to get another load because we just ran out Hi. you don't want another load Hi. okay I just gotta make sure from right there to there, I leave this road open from here over. That way I can drive up this way. We're getting loaded up right now. Yeah. Where are we going? Dad. Daddy. So, Alex's truck is still on the fifth wheel. This is not our tanker. We don't have that set up yet. We don't have a kit for ours. So we're uh, using this from, this is Josh Jarvis's. So he's letting, it, letting us use it. Chris was doing the first load with it. We had to get it all set up and stuff. The truck wasn't plumbed for it, but we got it figured out. It took a little bit of work, but to get it fitting our truck. How'd she pull? Heavy. She's heavy. Christoph's trying to figure everything out. I think he's trying to set the cruise control so the throttle stays up. This has the 8 inch unload. Ours is only 6. This sucker unloads quick. Well, that's the second load. Our second load up from this tanker here. Just finishing them off. It is not taking long for Alex to switch over to her truck. She's been waiting all day to get this truck. Just uh, took, had a lot of stuff to do and then he finally got around to getting this ready. Alex, you excited to tank her yet? She's a real trucker. So Henry left me. He's going to the the baby, the kids seat, and then the Alex's truck. Can you say bye bye? Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> He's all excited. He's showing her how to use the remote and line everything up. She has drove Ferdy's trailer last year in the fall a bunch, and she really liked having a tanker to haul a lot. But we don't have a kit here for the tanker we got. This one's close to 8,000. I think it's 8,000. The one that we have that needs to get set up is 6,300. But we just haven't got a kit yet. Now, no shit can come So now you can even put the propel on and it won't come out when you're ready. Alex is strapping Henry in, but she got out of the way. So Kristoff can, uh, dump into me because I it was with this trailer I could take the empty him well I'd empty one load in and then the second load I'd take and then I'd empty out this one completely and it was just enough to fit them both I don't know if I can do the same with this trailer because I think it's a little bigger but we're gonna find out but now with this little bit of a switcheroo I'm getting backed up but Christoph has to go finish up the Harrells real quick there's a little bit more uh Stuff to do on that, and then we'll get that going. We're here with Alex. What do you think? It's good. I like it. Hauls a lot of it on. She's hauling now. We got Henry here. He is. He's I think this is. Himself. This is his last ride with Alex for a little oh. while. We're gonna see if Oma Grandma is going. Gerhard's moved on to the next pile. This one's all done. Oh, you're empty. Christoph's rolling in a haul. I about taking that corner. You see the whole pickup leading. I'm not full full, but at least she's empty. She can go. Marcus's tractor just got brought down. Christoph's here picking up the employee that drove that down for him. And... Marcus is headed in too. He's not driving the big one right now, but he ain't not going to spread manure, that's for sure. So we still had to bring down the little spreader for him because he wanted to participate.
Well, Marcus was half unloaded on his first load. Goes over the CV. I heard a bang. And that normally always means the damn chain broke. But honestly, he's got very well at stopping when something breaks. He is getting much better. I don't see it broken here. Is it dragging? The shear bolt's still good. I don't see the chain. You sure it was, you didn't just, I don't know. You sure didn't hear a rock? Uh -huh. Here, Marcus, turn it on and we're gonna see what happens. Maybe you got lucky and you just heard a rock in there. Because occasionally a rock does get in there when you're loading. Whoa! Oh, that's where the problem is. Chain popped off. Well, Marcus, that's an easy fix. You got lucky. Yeah. So I don't got wrenches to open and loosen this, and normally half the time you don't waste your time doing that. You just, with a chain, pop it on a little bit. This is Marcus's first time doing this. He's gonna slowly turn it on, and it should pop it right back on. Okay, slowly do it. There you go. That's a quick fix, ain't it? He was turning while spreading, which you can't do with this thing because you turn a little bit, it, it just balances it right off. Should tighten this chain up anyways a little bit, but if he doesn't turn while spreading, won't have any issues. He got lucky. That's all that happened. Marcus goes over the radio. This damn spreader hates me. You know... You gotta start with the small equipment before you can use the big equipment. When I started, I had like a little Massey that was the size of that back tire. Got Gerhardt rolling in here. Yeah, the GoPro's working again. The battery's a little dead. I messed up, I left it on on accident. He's gonna record a little bit for you guys, maybe. If it doesn't die on him. Maybe. So I just got done loading up a load. And uh, the back side of that, uh, this field is uh, all done. At least for the front half. The far end of the back side is not done, but there's another pile farther down that we'll use to spread that. So I'm just going right here. I'm starting pretty close. So this is a pretty big field, so we try to pile manure in multiple places, so that way we're not hauling around the field empty to go back to the pile. It makes it a little more efficient. So uh, We're starting right up close to the pile. And this is definitely a lot different than the uh, little box spreaders that we were using before, or Marcus is attempting to use. I had pretty good luck with it so far all day today, so. That's new. So uh, the whole starting up is a little different too than the box spreaders. I got the PTO going, and then I uh, open up the, uh, the gate, I guess. And a lot of it's gonna fall onto it, so that's why you don't want to start. Uh, you want the uh, you want the PTO started before you uh, open the gate. And then all I gotta do is push that a little bit. And it puts it into a continuous push, so it's uh, nice and steady, and I don't have to touch it until it's empty. And uh, it has to push it back a little before it really starts hitting the meter, so I just sit there uh, not moving for a while until it, really, until it really starts coming. And then I hit my, uh, my preset, so that way it sets the RPMs and the speed. And no, I pushed them in. Then all I gotta do is steer the thing and the spreader does its own thing. I just gotta watch it, make sure nothing's going wrong. But it's pretty, pretty simple. At the beginning of the day, we didn't have it set so I could just push it and let it go. I had to sit there and hold it so there'd be continuous pressure and uh, that got old very fast. So Andreas fixed that. I mean, I don't know if you can see it, the sun, uh, 
shining in there. I guess when I'm done, I can show it when I'm driving the other way so that you can see it. But we're getting close to the end here. It goes back pretty far. And pretty much, as soon as you uh, see it stop uh, spitting out on the sides, which should be done here any second, maybe not a little early. But when you see it stop spitting out on the sides, there it goes. Then I just pull it back and it starts sucking it back to the front on its own. Kill the PTO. There, that shutoff wasn't very smooth, but I stopped it from coming back again because I wanted to you know, this, show it open. So there's two, uh, two separate floors, one in the back that's pushed by a separate piston and the main one obviously from here back. And uh, all I gotta do is pull this button just there we go just enough and uh, that's freehand I'm not touching anything it just sucks it all the way back and uh, when it gets to about here I slow it down and I let it I finish it uh, manually just to do it a little slower so it doesn't bonk it all into place and then uh, once that's to the front close the door up and I'm ready for another one I got the second load well I guess not second load but second load with the camera uh, I got the PTO on and the uh, gate open and pushing I'm just waiting for it to start uh, really coming off the sides there With the first few loads I did, I didn't sit there and wait. And uh, I mean, the first hundred feet really didn't have much uh, much manure coming out. So it's still a little bit slow, but. It does a very, uh, very even job, breaks it all up. There was a few loads I did that were straw that came out of the cab barn. It did a hell of a lot better job than the, uh, the horizontal beaters on the other uh, box spreaders. So definitely doing a better job of breaking it all up, making it nice and even. I think I'm getting downgraded from the uh, 8480 loading to the uh, MX120, they just dropped off a set of arrows to uh, have them till in the liquid manure and is spreading. So that came down with the 120, so they're probably going to take the 84, put it on those arrows uh, for tillage, because that 120 can't pull those. So. I guess the camera can't really pick it up, but right in front of me right here, Ryan came out and he's uh, helping Harold. He got done work today. He got his ass out here and he's driving tractor. First day of spring work and he's already here helping. That's what we like to see. That's good friends to have. I wasn't gonna get him on camera here, but he's running straight lines up and down. And I guess he's working towards the, well, my left, his right. Once he gets down that corner over there, he'll come over this way. But I'm finishing up this end right here because I'm done loading at the beginning of the field. We're going to start loading here in the middle where this other manure pile is. It's another high spot. It's nice and dry for trucks. We're out here in the middle. There's another big pile we got centered here. This is back here because it's another dry spot. We can haul to the back of the field. They don't have to drive all the way to the front. Marcus here just cranking. That kid was so happy when he got out of school and he found out he could spread today. Birdie's got the slow unloader now. The six inch is a lot slower than the eight inch. You wouldn't think it's a big difference, but it is. Uh, a little bit of a drive by right here. He's almost all the way caught up to us.
He's just cutting up the top, flipping the soil a little bit. Well, thumbs up from Ryan. He's just flipping the soil. That way there's uh, a little bit worked in. But he doesn't want to go too deep. So kind of just like two inches. And that's basically how it's going to sit until spring when we start. Oh, it is. On the, yes. Until we start planting the chisel plowing, it's going to be like this. This is going to be it for this video tonight, folks. Birdie's loading me up with the last half of his load or quarter or whatever he's got left in there. Christoph's here to pick me up. That way we don't want to drive it down the road from Enosburg. He's going to drive me. Ryan and Gerhardt, that way the tractors are here. It's supposed to rain tomorrow at 10, so maybe in the morning. Okay, so you're not on this side of the road yet? Just two loads. Uh, we only got, we may haul a couple loads tomorrow before the rain. If we do or don't, we'll see. But thanks for watching. Until the next one.